Hey everyone, Chris White here, CTO of Prefect, and today I'd like to give you a guided tour of the features and enhancements that you can expect when you first install Prefect 3.0. So first and foremost, it's very important to note that this 3.0 release is an open source package release. So Prefect Cloud users do not have to perform any API migrations as none of the APIs in cloud have changed. The 2.0 client will continue to be supported. 3.0 is purely a major version release of our Prefect Python open source package. In fact, one of the major headlines of 3.0 is that we have open sourced a significant feature that was previously only available in Prefect Cloud, namely our events and automation system. In addition to that, there are many other headline features, including the ability to execute tasks autonomously, essentially using Prefect as a task scheduler, as well as new and improved semantics for caching and managing pipeline failure. This release is packed with new features and performance enhancements that benefit OSS and cloud users alike. We're currently releasing 3.0 as a release candidate so that we can get feedback from you all and polish any rough edges before releasing it officially. We'll work with the community to pick a formal release date that will remove the release candidate label and we'll be letting everyone know when that is. But in the meantime, I'm really excited to see what folks build with these new features. So without further ado, let's dive into the details. So to kick us off, Prefect 3.0 fully embraces Pydantic V2, which as many of you probably know, brings improved serialization performance and ensures that Prefect is compatible with all the other cutting edge work going on in the Python ecosystem. I expect that many users won't notice this change actually, but if you're a heavy Pydantic user, possibly using Pydantic for specifying your flow parameter types, you'll need to make sure that they're compatible with Pydantic V2 when you upgrade. We've also reached the end of life for a few deprecations, most notably agents. So agents are now deprecated in favor of prefect workers. Agents were agnostic processes that submitted workflow runs to arbitrary infrastructure. With workers, you still get the same flexibility to pick and choose your compute layer, but in addition to that, because workers are typed to the infrastructure they submit to, they come with a stronger governance model that allows platform teams to expose opinionated and permissioned interfaces to their infrastructure. And in addition to this, workers have improved monitoring of both jobs and work pool and work queue health. Now next up, Prefect 3.0 introduces several quality of life improvements that help guide users to using the right features in the right situations. The two that I'd like to highlight here include improvements to artifacts and improvements to variables. So as a reminder, artifacts are essentially visual aids for your flow and your task runs. And in 3.0, we've introduced a few new artifact types, including a progress bar artifact that you can use for tracking progress within a task, as well as a new image artifact that you can use for charts and graphs. Now, if we think of artifacts as machine-produced, human-readable pieces of data, variables, in contrast, are machine-produced, machine-consumed pieces of data. So they allow users to store and retrieve arbitrary bits of configuration and data within a workspace. In support of this, in 3.0, we've expanded variables to allow for storing arbitrary JSON, not just basic strings. Now, perhaps the most significant quality of life improvement is that we have completely reworked our client-side engine that powers your workflows. Being Pythonic is very much a point of pride for us at Prefect, and we want to continue to ensure that Prefect requires minimal code changes to get up and running. This minimalism has made Prefect a popular choice for teams that build custom orchestration primitives that power their data platforms allowing users to simply add a few decorators and do things such as monitor a whole fleet of Lambda functions with minimal overhead. And in 3.0, Prefix Engine is more performant and more portable than it's ever been. So for example, just as flows can be nested within other flows, tasks can now be nested within other tasks. And generators are actually supported as tasks as well. Moreover, tasks can now be called and executed outside of the context of a workflow. Removing restrictions such as this makes Prefect much easier to use as a framework and also expands the orchestration use cases that Prefect can support, which I'll get to more in a minute. In addition to these engine changes, all of your code now runs on the main thread, which avoids some unintuitive errors that could arise in 2.0 and overall improves the speed of pipeline execution. Now there is one change in here that I'd like you to be aware of, which is that Prefect handles sync and async code slightly differently and you may need to account for that in your code. Specifically, many methods and utilities, such as loading blocks, may need to be awaited if you weren't already doing so, or specified explicitly as synchronous through a new keyword on the call. Now, going back to performance. Users running massively parallel workflows on distributed systems like Dask and Ray should notice significant speedups. 
In fact, some of our benchmark use cases benefited from a 90% reduction in runtime overhead. In addition to our new and improved Dask and Array task runners, Prefect 3.0 also includes a brand new task runner that allows you to submit Prefect tasks to remote environments natively within Prefect. Now, as I mentioned earlier, because Prefect tasks can now be executed independently of flows, what's really exciting about this new task runner is that this pattern allows users to leverage Prefect as a background task service, much like Celery. Now, while we're on the theme of expanding use cases, Prefect 3.0 also open sources a new mechanism for expressing event-driven workflows and automating your data platform. So for those who aren't aware, Prefect's events backend is essentially a loose coupling layer between Prefect and external systems. So this allows for easy monitoring, debugging, and automation. Specifically, you can trigger actions based on the presence or absence of certain event payloads. For example, you may want to cancel certain runs if an observable condition is not seen in some time window. Trigger a workflow run maybe when a new file lands in an S3 bucket, or receive a notification if a work pool goes unhealthy. All of this and more is now available in Prefect Open Source. Now, this leads me to the final headliner of our 3.0 release, and I will admit this is the one that I'm personally most excited to see users build with. The headliner that I'm speaking of is, of course, our new transactional interface. So this new feature comes directly from Prefect's product philosophy of designing for failure. We have always had a core belief that in the world of data, failure is an ever-present reality. Data platforms are fundamentally open systems, whether due to a constant stream of new data arriving or due to fractured ownership. This means that even the best code can and will fail due to the countless quirks and edge cases inherent in data whether it's inconsistent arrival times, upstream schema changes, duplicate data, non-deterministic model outputs, and brittle APIs. All of this results in data practitioners needing to build resiliency directly into systems that all have idiosyncratic failure modes. So when we talk about data pipeline resiliency and designing for unknown failure modes, one crucial property that pipelines need is item potency. Item potency is a property that guarantees that if you perform the same action twice, the state of your system remains unchanged. This is a property that's much easier to talk about than to achieve, as writing item potent code is notoriously challenging and there's no one-size-fits-all approach. Frustratingly, many frameworks explicitly assume their users write item potent code without helping them do so. In the world of data pipelines, having item potency allows you to safely rerun pipelines without duplicating work. This is particularly important when pipelines fail, as you need to have confidence that retrying or rerunning these failed pipelines won't lead to inconsistencies or unintended side effects. But even when pipelines are succeeding, avoiding the duplication of costly work is just as critical. Prefect's new transactional interface provides a structured approach to author item-potent pipelines and benefit from item potency in a first-class way. Now, in the most simple terms, Prefect's new transactional interface allows users to group tasks into transactions that will execute task rollback hooks if any one task in that transaction fails. This pattern allows you to undo side effects or in some situations avoid taking them all together, immediately giving users a framework for reasoning about workflow item potency. But it doesn't stop there. Even when your task is not necessarily computing a side effect that maybe instead is reading data from some system, Grouping tasks into transactions allows you to easily express what tasks should and should not rerun when any one of them fails. Let me explain in a little more detail. In Prefect's transactional model, a transaction is the bridge between two worlds. So on the one side, there's the model of code execution. This is where things like runs and the states of those runs are expressed. This world is useful for tracking what code is executing, what its status is, as well as offering monitoring and debugging functionality. This is essentially a prefect state machine that many of you are already familiar with. Now on the other side, there's the record of what work should be considered complete. I think of this as a receipt store where proof of work can be looked up and referenced. Prefect's new transactional model only writes these receipts or transaction records when a transaction is formally committed. Now by default, this is simply when a task run completes, and many users will be perfectly content to not think more about this. And for those users, Prefect will continue to behave as expected. But for those that do engage directly with transactions, the tasks within a transaction will not commit their records unless all of the tasks in that transaction succeed, which you probably recognize as a form of atomicity. So this gives users an expressive mechanism for specifying what tasks should and should not be considered complete together, or should be rerun together when recovering from failure. 
On top of all of this, Prefect allows you to configure a transaction key that identifies the location of this record. Now, when a key is already present, that task can be considered complete. And therefore, it shouldn't rerun and instead should just return whatever data is residing in the record. This is very similar to Prefect's current result mechanism, but with more intuitive caching layered on top. Critically, caching in this new model is dictated by the existence of a transaction record, not the existence of a completed state. Now, I could keep going as there are all sorts of knobs to play with here, such as transaction isolation, commit modes, and more, but I'll leave all of that as an exercise for the reader. Thank you for letting me share my excitement about our release with you. I hope you're just as excited as I am to use it for your old and new use cases alike, and please join us on GitHub to share your feedback. I personally can't wait to engage with many of you as you explore the new feature set. Happy engineering. <laughs>